How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure our media item defaults. Go to our preferences. And right down here is a tab for our media item defaults. The first option, which is on by default, is to create automatic fade-ins or fade-outs for new items. So if it's turned on, and we go into record, so record some audio. It automatically puts fade ins right here and fade outs over here. Which is really useful when we're punching in a lot. If you punch in on a weird syllable, it'll smooth it out by fading in on it or fading out on it. So once again, this is on by default. If we turned it off, and we go into record. It doesn't create those fade ins. So every punch has a hard transition because it's not being smoothed out by fades. And we could also adjust how long that fade is right here. The default is 10 milliseconds, but if we want to set it a bit higher, like 100 milliseconds, we could do it right here. Record an item. It automatically creates a fade that's 100 milliseconds long on the in and the out. Obviously, you could adjust it afterwards, but it's good to set it how you prefer right from the beginning. And the default is 50. Also, if it's turned off and we record some audio, we could always add it in by grabbing right here and creating fade ins and fade outs on the fly. But again, it's still quicker to have them on by default. Now we could also decide the fade in and fade out shape right here. It defaults to a fast start with a slow end, but we could choose any option like this one here, an S curve. Record some audio, and it creates an S curve fade in and fade out. Now we could change the curve on the fly by going up here and right clicking to linear or a fast start and a slow end. But if you have a preference, it makes more sense to choose it right from the beginning. And this is the default. I should also mention this is not just for recording new items, it's also for splitting items. Let's record a piece. And now, if we split this right here or here, each one of those splits has a fade out and a fade in. If this was turned off, let's undo those splits. Now, if we split it, there's no fades. But of course, we could add them manually. Let's turn this back on. So this is for new items that are being recorded and for splitting items. But there's another option for splitting items right down here. We could choose to overlap and crossfade them instead. If we choose this, now if we split, instead of fading in and out, it crossfades. So this item fades out as this one fades in. So it's a cross fade instead of a fade out and a fade in. And we choose that right here. Now we could also choose the length of that. The default is 10 milliseconds, but we could change it to anything we want. Let's try 250 milliseconds. Undo our splits. And let's split them again much longer crossfades. But we could tweak them very easily just by trimming them right here. Make them longer or move them over by holding shift. But again, it makes more sense to choose this value beforehand. And just like with fade in and fade out, we could choose the shape right here. It defaults to equal value, 
but we could change it to linear, crossfade them, and now they crossfade using the linear shape or any other shape we choose. And if we zoom in, we could right click and change the shape on the fly to this one or linear. But again, it makes more sense to choose the default ahead of time. Now, the next option changes how we edit our crossfades. Right now, if we adjust our crossfade by right clicking down over here, it's going to adjust both sides of the crossfade the same. So if we switch to this, it does both sides at the same time. Let's undo it. But we could change that behavior right here. If we choose this, by default, right clicking over here only changes one side. But we can override that option by holding down Shift. Right here, Shift toggles it. So if we hold on Shift instead, it'll do both sides at the same time. Right click, go back to linear, and both sides go back to linear. It's off by default, but we could change it here. The next option automatically fades in and fades out when we're dealing with MIDI items, and it adjusts the MIDI note velocity. This way, when you're crossfading, Two MIDI items, the velocity will sound smoother as each one crossfades. It's off by default, but if you want that to sound smoother, just choose that. The next option is down here deal with looping. By default, if we import new items, they're going to automatically loop. So let's import a drum loop. Right over here, let's just drag it in. I should mention, see how it's fading in? When you're importing drum loops, we probably don't want that. So we should probably turn this off. Automatic fade ins and fade outs. So let's re import it. Bring it in. And this time, there's no fades. So if we drag it out, Notice these little triangles here. That shows that the drum loop is looping. And the further we pull it out, the more it loops on both sides, after and before, which makes sense for drum loops. If we delete it, and this option is turned off, now if we drag it in and trim it out, it doesn't loop. The borders for the item still change on both sides, before and after, but the audio or even MIDI is not going to loop. But we could change that after the fact. By right clicking and choosing loop item source, this is going to loop the item as long as we trim it out. And we could turn it off just as easily, right here. But by choosing it in the preferences, right here, decides how it happens when you first import it. Bring it in. It automatically loops by default. But there are times where you don't want that. If we bring in a snare sample, We don't really want that to loop. So in those situations, we would turn this off. And if we trim it out now, it changes the item borders, but it doesn't loop the audio. But again, this was on by default. The next option is to loop source for new MIDI items. This is also on by default. But if we turn it off and we create 
new MIDI items like this, they're not going to loop when we trim them out like this or this, but we can change that. Turn it on here. So we can create a MIDI item like this. And now if we trim it out, it actually loops again on both sides. But if we don't want that, turn it off here. And now it doesn't loop. It just changes the item boundaries. The next option is looping source for recorded items. This is also on by default, but if we turn it off and we record some audio, this isn't going to loop. So if we trim it out, it changes the boundaries, but the audio doesn't loop. Again, we can change that right here. So now if we record something and trim it out, now it loops, as you can see by these triangles right here. Each one of those is another loop. But we can change it by right-clicking and turning it off here, and it doesn't do that, or put it back. But again, it's much easier to decide ahead of time, especially if you're working with many different things at the same time. Now, if you notice, when you select this, this option becomes available as well. Time Selection Auto Punch Audio Recording will create a loopable section. So let's try that out. Without it, if we switch to Time Selection Auto Punch, and create new media items in separate lanes, let's create a loop recording. Do a few passes of it. Now, if we separate this like this and trim it out, it's one long file. It doesn't actually loop. All these pieces played together create one long file. But if we want to create loopable sections, We could choose this option. And now, if we record in loop mode, each one of these passes can be a loop. Pull it out, see the triangle? So we can figure out which one we want to use and get rid of the others. Whether it could be this one or this one. So it's a great way of doing loop recording and comping the best take. And it's only available if we choose loop source for recorded items. So that's pretty much it. That's the media item defaults in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you.